Welcome to Movie Film, my name is Carl, and I finally got to see Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Then I waited for the film to come out on VOD so I could rent it at home, watch it in the comfort of my own home because I wasn't taking the risk to go to the cinema. No film's worth that. But it's a Christopher Nolan film. And if you watched Movie Film's countdown of the 100 greatest ever movies, you'll know that I'm very much a Christopher Nolan fan. There's plenty of his films scattered throughout that list. However, this one, as the title has already alluded to, is terrible. It's his worst movie. Just putting it out there right from the start. And we'll get into it as to why I think that. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who don't think that and will argue with me till they're blue in the face, but let me get my points across and then we can hash it out in the comments. Christopher Nolan, master filmmaker, no one's ever gonna deny that to me anyway. He's made some sensational films down the years. But it's starting to look like he's backed himself into a corner where he has to constantly outdo himself. And I think that's this movie's downfall. It's a fairly simple story when you look at the basic plot, told in the most convoluted way possible. That's all it is. I did my research after watching the movie, and I only watched the movie 12 hours ago. To be honest, my brain's still a little bit fried from trying to keep up with it. But I went and did a little bit of research on the internet to see what everyone else's opinion of it was. Maybe my opinions were wrong. Maybe I was just watching a bad version of the movie because some of the technical stuff in the film was questionable. To the point where you question, is this a Christopher Nolan movie? Because why would that happen? The thing is, I found myself in this movie questioning everything. And maybe I was looking at stuff in too much detail, wondering, is that going to come back later? Is that important? What's happening here? Why is this the thing? And maybe I was just worried too much at the start and wasn't focusing enough on the story rather than trying to pick up the small little things that were going to come back later. But in my research, as I was getting to earlier, I found a lot of people didn't like the movie because Again, like I said, they thought it was too convoluted, hard to follow the plot. But a lot of people who even did like the movie and were given a five out of five on Rotten Tomatoes or were given a 10 out of 10 on whatever scoring system it was, their actual comments all read the same. That it was hard to follow, it took a lot of concentration, but it's Christopher Nolan. And here's the thing guys, Christopher Nolan is fallible. He, and not every movie he's gonna make is gonna be fantastic. Look at Martin Scorsese, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, but The Irishman was shit. Pure and utter shit. But it doesn't mean Martin Scorsese's not a good filmmaker. And Tenant, Tenant's shit. And here's why. So, for anyone who was struggling with the plot, I was struggling with, everyone was struggling with the plot. It's not the plot. It's the keeping up with all the things that are going on screen, because there's so much happening. But the basic premise of Tenant, and if you haven't seen it, go watch it and then come back, because there's gonna be spoilers here. But the basic premise is there's a bad guy, an Eastern European bad guy, very stereotypical, and he wants to destroy the world. So there's this CIA agent, spy, and an Eastern European bad guy who wants to get this device, he needs the ninth part of the algorithm, which is going to destroy the world. Eastern European bad guy, good guy spy, has to stop the bad guy from destroying the world. It's very basic, it's borderline James Bond. It's almost Christopher Nolan's attempt at a James Bond movie. While it's a basic story where the good guys are trying to stop the bad guys, the story is told in the most awkward way possible. Now it's an interesting idea the inversion of time, <laughs> but it's kind of taking time travel to a new unnecessary element. The problem is so much is happening in this movie. You know, you're trying to focus on everything and the film is jumping so fast. And that's one thing that I didn't like about the film at the start. I was wondering if it was one of those things that was gonna come back later and whether there was a reason for it. But the editing, especially in the first hour, it's bang, bang, bang. It's super fast. Super duper fast editing when people are talking. To the point where the dialogue, especially in the first hour, for example, the scene with Michael Caine, the dialogue, it just edited so badly to the point where it, the conversation comes across unnatural. Right as one person finishes a word, the other person is already speaking and there's no breath between the sentences. They're jumping on each other. And this happens a lot in the first hour. And I was wondering if there was intention there to make the movie faster, sure, but maybe there was gonna be like some secret code. There was a lot of seemingly weird hand movements too. 
I was wondering if that was going to come back later on. I'm not sure it did, but then again, maybe I need to watch it under 50 times to catch everything. And then you've got the big issue throughout the movie. I'm not sure if it's just an issue for me. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments if it was an issue for you. But for me, I found a lot of the time I couldn't understand what the actors were saying because the music was so high that it was drowning out the dialogue. And you couldn't hear what people were saying. And now sometimes that was intentional because some characters were inverted. So they were speaking backwards. But for a lot of it, it was hard to catch what they were saying. And if you can't hear what characters are saying, that's just gonna add more to the confusion of what's going on. The ridiculously fast editing in the first hour, the over the top music and hard to hear dialogue just muddied the waters and everything. And maybe again, that was intentional. You never know, Christopher Nolan. The inverted car chase scene is kind of cool. Definitely some cool stuff in this movie, some great action, but keep it up with everything. It'll blow your mind, it literally will. It'll melt your head trying to keep up with everything. I'm pretty sure this is one of those movies you need to watch like 50 times to catch everything, but the problem is it's two and a half hours long. That first hour I felt flew by and the extra hour and a half dripped along very slowly. So You've got two and a half hours. I don't want to watch two and a half hour movie 50 times so I have to catch everything. That movie will take up my entire life if I do that. And previous Nolan films, they've had a little bit of that, what would you call it? The part where you have to just focus. You really have to focus during a movie so you catch everything and the story makes sense. Inception in particular had a lot of that. Interstellar had a bit of that, but they were both great movies. This one, as I said, it's got a very basic story told in a very convoluted way. And the thing with the dialogue I mentioned earlier, where everyone's speaking fast and the editing's fast, it just made the acting performances seem bad, especially in the first hour. It's hard to keep up with, but I felt towards the end, I had just barely, just about kept up with the whole story. And as I say, when you break the whole story down, you take out the inversion thing and you've got a very basic plot. Is the inversion thing worthy of making a whole movie around it? You know, it's got a lot of good action. The acting gets better in the last hour or so, but this is a Christopher Nolan movie that I'll never watch again in my lifetime because life's too short. Life's just too short trying to put that much focus into a movie. I don't think it's a very well-told story, and movies should always be a well-told story. You should never leave a movie going, what the fuck just happened? So for me personally, by a long, long distance, Tenant is Christopher Nolan's worst movie. And that's a hard thing to say as a Christopher Nolan fan. I'd love to hear from people out there who absolutely love the movie. Tell me your favorite part, tell me what I missed out on, tell me why I'm wrong. And the people who agree with me, I want to hear your opinions too, especially if you're a Christopher Nolan fan. Did you dislike this movie as much as I did? Or even if you're just neutral and you're like, you're not quite sure, you're going to watch it again and give it another chance, let me know your thoughts in the comments section. This is definitely one to talk about. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like today's video, please hit the like button just so that I know what you're watching. And of course, if you're new to movie film, please check out some of the other content we've got right over here. If you like what you see, consider hitting the subscribe button for new content every Wednesday and Friday. And with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching.